Joy's Knitting Nest. My name is Joy and this is my nest. To start off with, I have a few finished objects to show you. One I have not to show you. I mentioned last time that I was working on a cardigan for my husband, the Affinity Cardigan by Patty Lyons, and I did finish it. This podcast is airing after Christmas, however, I'm recording before Christmas, so the sweater is all wrapped up and I don't have it to show you. So I will show it to you next time. In the meantime, Merry Christmas. Ding, ding, ding. One of my finished objects is a Christmas ball. Back in the spring, when we were first under quarantine or lockdown or whatever you call it, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Arna and Carlos started a quarantine knit along. And that was when I did this pillow over here. They were uh, giving us a block a week and it ended up being, I can't even tell you how many blocks, but I took two, four, six, I took 12 of my blocks and made them into this pillow. And I had a few blocks left over that I haven't done anything with. Now, for Christmas, they are doing an Advent Knit Along. Uh, it's called Advent Calendar 2020 24 Christmas Balls by Arna and Carlos. So, for 24 days of Advent, they were releasing one ball each day. Now, I was busy working on my cardigan for my husband, so I didn't have time to work on the balls. But when I was finished, I did have time to whip up one ball. This one is uh, Advent, the 14th day of Advent. It's called Snow Crystals. Their pattern calls for DK weight yarn on size 4 needles, but I used fingering weight yarn on size 0 needles. My ball is about maybe three inches tall. One, two, yeah, about three inches tall and three inches wide-ish. So it would have been, I don't know, maybe this much bigger if I had done it with bigger yarn. Anyway, I like the size on the using the fingering weight yarn. So now I have it in my head that maybe I'll make these for Christmas gifts next year. That'd be fun. So that's one. Merry Christmas. Also, I finally finished the socks I was working on. I'm using the Into the World sock yarn that I purchased at Rhinebeck a couple of years ago. This is Pococo is the name of the yarn and the colorway is Captain Tight Pants. I'm very happy with how they turned out. They look kind of grayish in the picture, however they lean towards brown. They have all kinds of colors in them, green, yellow, orange, red, brown. Uh, but when, I, when you kind of look at them from a distance, it strikes me as basically a brown sock. So I put them in the drawer along with my other brown socks. Here's the second one. I don't have a blocker for it. It's interesting how much, I mean, you know that knitting stretches, but when it's unstretched, it's significantly smaller. One thing I'm a little troubled by is the top, my cast on at the top is a little bit tight when I pull it up on my leg. And that hasn't happened to me for years. So I was trying to figure out why that might have happened. And I'm thinking, this is a very light sock yarn. In fact, I barely used more than half of the ball for both of my socks, and I usually work an 8 inch cuff, which is, uses a lot of sock yarn. So this yarn is quite lightweight, 
on the lighter side for fingering. So I'm thinking because it was so light, that caused my cast on to be tighter than usual. That's what I'm guessing anyway. But they do fit and I've worn them once already and they're very nice. I have one more finished object to show you. This is a little mug cozy I made. Isn't it adorable? I love it. So a few years ago, the bobble hat pattern was rampant. It went viral, so to speak. Uh, it was the featured pattern for Shetland Wool Week. I'm not sure what year I'll put it down in the notes. And it's called the Bobble Hat by Donna Smith. And because it was so popular, she ended up making all kinds of other things things with the same pattern. She made a hat, she made mug cozies, I think there were, oh, a sweater, a whole like series of objects designed on the same pattern. So I saw she has a mug cozy pattern and I liked it and favorited it. And I decided that my mug when I put, fill it with hot tea, it's too hot to hold, which is the purpose of a mug cozy, right? To make it so that you can actually hold your cup while it's steaming hot. So that's why I decided to make it. And I was debating between a couple of patterns, but this one I decided to go with. Since I already had her bobble hat pattern, I decided not to buy the mug cozy pattern, and I just made it up myself. And I used the chart from the hat. Now, this is my second try. The first one I made here, I was just guessing at how many stitches around and how many rows high. Uh, and I did like she did in her pattern, which was for the closure at the back. She made a steak from rib to rib and then left the ribbing going across at the top and the bottom. The idea being that that would hold it in a circle at the top and the bottom of the mug. So a couple thing, things happened on my first try. First, I had a few too many stitches. It was a little long. And when I put the ribbing at the bottom and the top over the handle, because the handle is curved on the cup, the bottom ribbing just slid right up the handle. It didn't stay down there. So I ended up just sticky, cutting the whole thing and then making a flap and I just threw on some buttons. You can see here, one, two buttons. And I didn't even bother with buttonholes. I used buttons that were small enough I could just push them through the fabric. But then the major thing that wasn't working for me is that when I go to hold my cup, it's not quite tall enough for my hand. Like if I squeeze my fingers together, I can get it to fit, but it's uncomfortable. Like I like to hold it more loosely like this, in which case my fingers go off the edge of the mug cozy and that defeats the purpose of it because then this part of the mug is too hot to hold. <laughs> so, I, for my second try, I made it taller. I didn't bother with trying to do the ribbing around the bottom. I just cut the whole thing and then I put on a little, might be hard to see, but there's, I put on a little bitty button band with two buttons. And so that is the current version it's nice and wide. I can get my hands all over the whole thing. The one unexpected thing, I'm not sure, is that because the yarn is, and the mug, they're both slippery. So it like just slides right up and down the mug. 
So, <laughs> it's a little awkward to drink out of because as you as you're drinking, you know, like the thing slips and it spills and so maybe a mug cozy is not I don't know. We'll see. I haven't used it that much yet since I made it. But I love it. I think it's the cutest pattern. It's so sweet. Okay, so much for my rambling. Two things I want to mention is that I have mask knee. So I just discovered that this is a word. But shortly after November, I got developed this little rash right here on my face. And it's better now, but it's still there. I'm having trouble getting rid of it. And in the meantime, after a couple of weeks of having it, I read that it's a thing. They call it maskne, which is a mashup of the words mask and acne. <laughs> maskne. <laughs> and I'm like, oh... Well, I guess I'm not the only one with this problem. So I'm hoping it goes away. Otherwise, I may end up having to go see the dermatologist. And then another thing is that my thumb is hurting. After I finished the cardigan for my husband, like that last week that I was working on it, my thumb started to hurt. And I didn't think anything of it because I have hurt things before. I have rheumatoid arthritis, so I have pains that come and go. But this pain was not going. It came and it never left. And I decided I needed to stop knitting. So I've gone three days now without knitting. And my thumb is a little better, but it's not better. And let me tell you, Knitting is such a big part of my life that I've been struggling the past few days. What do I do with my time? <laughs> oh. Anyway, I'm hope I'm going to give it like a week maybe. I don't know, we'll see. Depends how long it can hold out not knitting and how badly it's hurting. I may end up seeing the doctor about that as well. All right, so what am I working on now? Even though I'm not knitting, I have started a new project because I started this before I stopped knitting. So my new project is going to be a cabled cardigan for myself. Originally, I was thinking about doing the same cardigan for my husband and me, the Affinity cardigan. But as I got through the cardigan, I got second sweater syndrome. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't want to make the same sweater over again. So I went through my library. I love Ravelry for that. I was able to search cabled cardigans in my library, and I found three that I have that I would love to make. And it was a very difficult decision. I'm like, oh, this one, that one, that one. I hemmed and hauled for like a week. And then I finally decided... This is called the Bray Cardigan. It is by Josie Mercier. Not sure how to say it, but it has. It's uh, actually similar to the Affinity Cardigan in a lot of ways because it has a main cable pattern and then a secondary cable pattern. It has doesn't have a shawl collar, but it has a pretty substantial um, stand-up collar. And then on the back, it has the uh, cables with a center cable down the middle. So I have swatched for it. The uh, main swatch is what she calls box stitch which I might call moss stitch. It's a two by two seed stitch type pattern. The main big cable, she calls it the wide cable, is this. And then the smaller cable along the sides, I did two of these, is this. 
has a double cable in the middle, which I really like. And then the uh, third cable down the middle of the back is, is kind of a, a wide rope. I'm not sure what you would call it, but it goes with all of them. So I'm super excited to get started on this, but I can't knit right now. It's so frustrating. All right. COVID's really bad. As I mentioned last month, it was uh, spiking uh, after Thanksgiving, and it's pretty bad now. I think our positivity rate is in the teens. Last time I checked, it was 13%, which is better than 30%, but it's still way worse than 4%, which is the target goal. And at this point, pretty much everybody knows somebody who either has it or tested positive, positive for it. So we're still... We're now locked down for three weeks. Locked down. <laughs> There's still a lot of people getting out and doing things, but um, we have stopped in-person worship at church for three weeks. And restaurants had to close their indoor dining for three weeks. And we're only into the not even the first week of the three weeks, so we'll see what happens. In the meantime, it's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Let me know what you're up to. What are you knitting? What are you working on? Did you finish anything? Let me know in the comments. Until next time. Bye-bye.